Hello, it's Gray. Hello, it's Crystal. And this is Vast Asian Beauty, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times. And I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian. So for today's episode, we will be discussing uh, season four. In general, this is going to be our season four ender and some season five expectations as well. So for today's episode, we actually have our very first guest in the podcast. Ooh. This is uh, Monica from uh, I've Been Meaning to Watch That. Uh, Monica, would you like to introduce yourself to everyone? Yes, I would. Hi, everybody. My name is Monica. Like Grace said, I am from the I've Been Meaning to Watch That podcast. It's a podcast that I created and I host every other week. Well, every single week, I have a new guest, new topic, and we talk about, you know, all things under the sun. Um, my newest episode is going to be about Mean Girls, where we talk about the 2004 film the um 2015 musical yeah, and then the newest like musical and you like do like a breakdown of it i've heard that there are actually lesbians in it hell Except yeah yes yes janice is confirmed okay. queer we love to see it and renee rap likes to talk about how regina mm-hmm. george to her is gay and i support it so you know there's that and i think the week before that, we did an episode about Yellow Jackets uh-huh. in the Wilds. So there's a lot that you guys can listen to. Uh, feel free to check us out wherever you listen to the podcast. I've watched Yellow Jackets. I haven't watched the Wilds. But anyway, yeah. It's a, it's a good show. It's interesting. Okay, so before we actually start uh, our usual season four, uh, season ender format, I want to ask you first, like, what is your background as a supernatural watcher? So I started watching Supernatural when I was fairly young. To be perfectly honest, I used to catch episodes of Supernatural just randomly on the WB Mm. back when it was a WB. And then I started watching like reruns on TNT. And I didn't really know that much about the show. And it wasn't until my family got an internet when I was 13 years old, like internet and cable, that I was able to like fully start watching the show. Like I started watching from the beginning to, you know, the, at least the current season that was running. And I think it was season eight. So from there, uh, I would watch every single, I would watch the seasons live as they happen on the CW or I'd watch on CW.com and suffer through their three minute commercials which i feel like are longer than yeah. the commercials on tv but i would you know watch the current season and then when it ends i'd go back to the beginning on netflix and watch all the way through and you know netflix only puts a new season end of, of supernatural it, yeah. like a month before the new season airs on cw yeah and um that's i mean that's really my like experience with supernatural mm. and also i was a tumblr girl so i was already deep in it and then when um a certain somebody, you know, was fridged in season yeah. 10 of Supernatural. That's when I stopped watching it. And then they brought the Nephilim in season 13. And then I was like, you know what? Let me give it a chance again. And they announced that it was ending season 15. So I was like, it's time for a rewatch. And so I am kind of a Supernatural expert. But, you know, that's like maybe on the intermediate level. I know a lot yeah. of Supernatural. Yeah, I don't even I know say. who got fridged in season 10. So... You should. It's um. Yeah. It's our well, resident I, favorite. I'm supposed to only know about this from social media. Don't tell me. <laughs> but this is like a big. Yeah. It's surprising think, that you don't know about it because yeah. when it happened, if I it told was you, huge. you'd be like, "Oh, okay." I think you just don't recall Already the know. specific mm-hmm. season that it happened, but you know it happened for sure. <laughs> so right. That's very interesting, actually. So like, you watched it like the way most people who are just casual watchers watch it also like just on the tv before you got really into it yeah did you have like incredibly different perspectives on the characters and everything before you watched it like fully when you were just watching it like on the on the telly when i was watching it just casually i just felt like oh these are two brothers and they're hunting monsters and i thought of it as like a supernatural yeah procedural because I was already acquainted with, I already watched like Charmed 
And before that, I've watched, um, like, Smallville. Um, so Supernatural is just another one of those shows that came on TV, yeah. but I didn't really know about it. But it was the only show that, like, really drew my interest just because, like, it has such a strong fan yeah. base on Tumblr. Um, so watching it casually was like, oh, this is a TV show. I watch it the same way I watch Bones. Like, I'm not going to watch it in order. I'm just going to watch it what's on TV. But then when I started watching it, like, seriously sit, sat down watching it, I was like, there's a lot yeah. of lore behind this. And I feel like that really sucked me in. Mm. I'm not sure if actually I was watching it on Filipino television with the Tagalog dub, like, before I started watching the show, like, mm-hmm. actually, or if I caught it sometimes before that also. But, like, the experience of catching a show on television is really a different experience than, like, you know, watching it intentionally. So it is, like, fascinating when people are like, oh, and mm-hmm. I started watching Supernatural, like, just catching it on the television. I want to ask specifically yeah. about season four, like... I think the last time we spoke to each other, you mentioned that you love season four. Like, it really is your favorite season. So, I do. I would say season four, in my eyes, is, like, one of the best seasons of Supernatural. Um, I would say, like, the season that I kind of hold dear to me is season three, but that's kind of short. And it's also, like, a, it's, like, season three of Supernatural is, like, season four of Community. You know what I mean? It's, like, the gas leak <laughs> season, like... Every single episode is, like, a, not a throwaway, but it's very meta, and it's very goofy, and even though it kind of sets you up for season four, it doesn't really, like, it goes deep into, like, the whole, like, heaven and hell thing, but not too deep, and the season four is really when, like, yeah. everything gets nailed down. Like, you learn the lore, you introduce the angels, you introduce the apocalypse, you introduce God and, like, Michael, and all these things, and the Sam and Dean realize that... They go from being hunters yeah. to being instruments of God. And the thing that they did out of obligation becomes something they do that's as their destiny. And they have to, you know, come to terms with whether or not they're going to fulfill this destiny. Or they have to come to terms with the fact that, like, they don't do it. Yeah. And then something even worse happens, you know. So that's why I like season four, because it raises the yeah. stakes. I think um, I've said this prior, mm. uh, but, like, I do think tend to think of season one to three as the prequel of the show. <laughs> like, and season four is when it really starts. Yeah. Like, it really <laughs> begins. And I have a lot of times in yeah. season four where I did think, like, we're in Supernatural now. Like, this is Supernatural now. Especially, I think, because of the introduction mm-hmm. of Cass. Because, you know, I'm very, very... I love Cass so much that, like, to me, a lot of Supernatural is just Castiel. And so, like, now that he's here, it's like, oh my god, we're actually watching Supernatural now. But yeah, you're right. Like, it is a completely different vibe from season one to entry. I feel like, because cause your main takeaway from Supernatural is that it's about free will and, like, the main characters are team free will by the end. But, like, that's yeah. only possible because there's a heaven... And, like, yes. because heaven, like, introduces the idea of fate in a way that the demons in hell yeah. just, like, does not. So, like, yeah. yeah, no, this is, like, when supernatural becomes supernatural. Do you think it was, like, mm-hmm. a bummer for people who liked it before, though? Oh, I'm like, sure the show it's has a bummer completely for some people. changed, like, what its point is. I mean, there's, like, a lot of reviews, right, that we read where it's, like, mm. oh, the angel demon, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, annoying. like, can't wait so. until this is over and we get back to <laughs> yeah. Supernatural. And it's never like, going to oh, be buddy. over. Like, oh, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm curious about your cast girl, Dean girl, Sam girl alignment, Monica. Yeah. My cast girl, Dean girl, Sam girl alignment? Like, alignment. Which, which of them like, is your which favorite? Which one's your fave? Um... I would have to say, like, I was a Sam girl for a long time. Like, when I was young, Hell I loved yeah. Sam. Good. But now I'm, like, a strong cast girl. Because they just good. kept playing in my guy's face. So true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But do you or do you not have strong feelings regarding D and, and both the positive and the negative? I don't really have any strong feelings towards D because... <laughs> Everybody already likes Dean, so it's like, okay, yeah. he's cool, he's got it, you know? I like, I kind of put him to the side. And it's not like I don't like Dean at all. It's just kind of like, mm, I mean, he's okay. Yeah. Like, he's there. He's, the, he's like the favorite. He's like 
the number one draft pick, so to speak. So he doesn't need yeah, my love. The writers are obsessed with him. This they is yes. true. about everything. I it's weird like that they're so obsessed with him. And then, yeah. Yeah. never mind. Let me not. Let me not. No, I, no I'm curious. We are completely fine with this. We hate Dean. Right? We hate Dean so much. <laughs> no, I Wait, love Dean. No, I didn't say I hate okay, Dean. Okay, I hate I Dean. Saying, like, I hate Dean. <laughs> and I think that being neutral wow. about Dean is a very good, brave decision to yeah. make. In this podcast, like, I am the Dean lover. But, like, mm-hmm. just because Crystal just doesn't like him so much and so i've just been oh. trust up on this position <laughs> like because crystal doesn't like him but yeah, yeah go on i was just saying that, like it's ironic that the writers love dean so much and that like yeah he got so many like good stories and like interesting plot lines mm. throughout the seasons just for them to kill him with a nail like what yeah. is that yeah. What is that? I would funny. actually fight the writers. I would actually yeah. no. It's not even funny. Like I played this character for fifteen years. I would <laughs> actually like we was our boxing. Like screw what Eric Kripke <laughs> says. Everybody's getting these hands. Okay. Was he even involved by the end? Where was it? where was Eric Kripke at the end of Supernatural? I don't think he was particularly involved, he but Jensen was... Ackles apparently called him, right? Oh, yeah, to be he like, called yeah. him. He was like, this is a really difficult, yeah. like, thing for me to yeah. hear about my character and Eric Kripke. Yeah, and was Eric just, was like, like go for just go it. for it, it's man. Fine. Yeah. Like, could Jensen Ackles have gotten them to rewrite it? Like, what did he think was going to happen? He could have. He could have, but he didn't care because he was developing the boys. So. Yeah. Mm. I, I felt very much like you when the show ended, like... I think mm-hmm. around 2021, I was very, like, upset with the show. And even when we were starting this podcast, which was, like, early 2022, I was mm-hmm. kind of, like, afraid of how we're going to do season 15, even though it's, like, years from now. Because I'm, like, it's mm-hmm. still, like, a very sore and bitter topic for me. I think nowadays I have, like, just mellowed out. But only because I am rewatching Supernatural from the beginning, so, like, yeah. my mindset is still here. It's still not in okay. season 15. Sometimes I would think about it and still be like, ah, what, what were they doing? <laughs> but, yeah, I think maybe that feeling for me will resurface. Maybe, or maybe not, when we get to the later seasons of the show and the podcast. I'm gonna have to yeah. take Dean Girl sensitivity training so I don't laugh throughout his death <laughs> the whole time. Oh my yeah. god. Crystal is such a hater. Specifically, I want to watch to ask you about like your rewatch of season four. Did you rewatch it uh, recently? Do you have any new thoughts on the matter? Any surprises that got to you? Um. Yeah. Upon my rewatch, I was just like, oh my gosh, I was kind of taken aback by the nostalgia of it all, yeah. and I was taken aback by just how terrible quality it was first of all because i'm watching this on netflix and i at some points i was watching it on my like tv i'm like damn this is actually like this feels like 2000 all over again but um i loved rewatching it um i feel like every single time i've rewatched supernatural there are little things that i pick up on and little things that i see um i do want to say i liked the original Meg that they had, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. played by Nikki Acock, she was blonde. I yeah. liked her, but I'm not gonna lie, like the brunette Meg does like hold a special place in my heart. But yeah. I remember just like there were those little things that I noticed, and then um Ruby, of course, yeah. being like, Oh my gosh, that's Sam's wife. It's like seeing her, and I was like, This is a weird, kinky, kinky foreplay of her <laughs> just like being the, yeah, like a, uh, almost uh, an abuser, uh, and then them dating. Is, yeah, 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 truly an experience. Yes, it was, yeah, it was weird, it was interesting, but it was definitely weird, and um. What else? Yellow Fever, of course, is my favorite. Um, made me laugh so hard. And also, Eye of the Tiger, when he's doing the Eye of the Tiger, like, um, performance on the car. Yeah. That's my favorite part. I love it so much. I started, like, laughing so hard. There, I actually started laughing a lot during these episodes. And that's the one thing that I feel like New Supernatural yeah. missed that Old Supernatural did beautifully. Was that the show was just funny. You know? Like, really? It, it's, yes. 
It's funny. Like, I syrup, so I'm like, I think, ha, you I think, think it's my understanding it's that less Supernatural funny. has turned more sitcomish, like, as the seasons progressed. Mm. I think the future Supernaturals are funny. But, I mean, again, I've, I'm at I my like season four mindset right now. I it's trying to be funny, though. Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. Mm. Like, it's trying to be comedic on purpose instead of yes. whatever it is they're doing here. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. I get that. In season four, it's like, these are two idiots that are dealing with, like, demons and angels. They are prepared for the apocalypse. This is what they've been waiting for since the beginning of creation this is something they've been hoping for this is something they've been like like longing for like to have a war on earth like they don't even care that these two idiots are here and these two idiots have only been born like a speck of time in comparison to like the centuries that these demons and angels have been alive just have to deal with these two and they're just trying to like you know get this started you know what i mean yeah so yeah it's it's fun to watch um it's also fun to see like all the writers who have been on the show for so long flex these muscles. And it's crazy because like a lot of the episodes are really good. And I was just like, how is it that y'all wrote season four and put together like this work of art, like this storyline, and you gave us like season seven? Like, how did that happen? Yeah. How do we, where do we lose the plot? You know what I mean? I think, yeah. um, the thing is, as you said, like they do, there are episodes in this season that are like, wow, that's like really good. But there are also times where it's like, oh, I understand how this show turned into whatever it becomes in the future, because like it's the same writers, and I think both the like you know the stuff that they're good at talking about, and also their pitfalls, like both like individual writers and the show. I think you can see it in season four. Um, yeah, I think honestly, like, um, the reason why season four feels so good is because the tail end is just excellent. Mm. I really do think that, like, I think the the first few episodes, honestly, were yeah, just so, so. I was so, not so, impressed. I mean, yeah. Last Rising then, was good. And 4.03 yeah. was good. 4.02, yeah. eh. And then I feel like I the rest of them were, I mean, okay, Metamorphosis had its thing i think it was like the middle of season four where it was just regular case episodes that like no were particularly impressive but i think that the beginning and the end are both yeah very good yeah and that's why you like it's easier to remember it fondly yellow fever is an interesting pick because i watched that episode like me and crystal we did like it was entertaining like it was fun i love it's just that yeah you think about the implication of what they did to that ghost and it's like what is this like even <laughs> in, like the thing about supernatural is you would have like an a fun episode that is beloved by the fandom beloved by like you know both viewers were really into it and casual viewers are like and then you watch it and you, it is fun it is fun it's just that there will always be something there that you're like what is that <laughs> What were they doing? And for yeah. Yellow Fever, for me, it was like the way they resolved the actual ghost situation. Yeah, they were like, mm-hmm. this man was murdered so horribly because of like his like ableist or whatever community. And the way to get rid of him as a ghost is to like kill him again in the exact same horrible yeah. way. I remember I was watching season four. And there are a lot of episodes that I realize serve as kind of um I don't know how else, I don't know how else to describe them, but like branches. Because a lot of times if a show feels like they're about to get cancelled or they feel yeah. like they mean mm-hmm. you know, they may not be renewed, they'll introduce new things in the season and they'll stay on like the plot line. So like this season four stays with like the apocalypse keeping lucifer from like breaking the levy and like you know getting out but it also introduces a lot of other things you know first of all it introduces carver edland yeah who is writing the, the supernatural books yeah yeah and then there's adam you know they're introducing their half brother yeah that they yeah. didn't know about you know there are a lot of things that are introduced here like i think also ghost facers yeah is oh, season four? they were in they season were brought three? back in the 
they it's came a terrible back life. and it's a terrible life but but that's more of like a they planted that seed before and this is like it growing now is with ghost facer yeah but you're right like they do plant seeds in this season because they're just like you know the apocalypse storyline is great but you know guys if you want to continue the show we have other things so we can jump back to you know yeah in case you want to keep us going yeah i mean i do frequently wonder like when they decided that season five was not going to be the end like was it here like when they were doing season four were they already like and we're going to have a season six and seven. Or was that more of a after they finished season five, they got renewed again? I, I'm not, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't in Super, into Supernatural at the time. So I, I have no gauge whatsoever on what the yeah. on the show climate was at the time. But like, but it is interesting to think about. Because me and is. Crystal were, yeah, we're also discussing the other episode, like what is supernatural about like what are they trying to say mm-hmm. and because if you just look at supernatural at the original quote unquote original run of one to five it's it's saying a completely different thing than what it ends up saying in the full show at the 15 seasons so yeah like supernatural when did you know like what were they doing and how did they deal with the continuance of the show it's it's interesting so yeah, um, uh, sure. Crystal, yes. you, I mean, you have talked a little bit, but what, what's your season four general feelings now that we have gone through the entire thing? Um, I, I don't know, like, uh, there's just not that many feelings that exist. Yeah. Like, I liked when the levee breaks a lot, but like, you know, in our, our 422 recording, I said that I didn't feel particularly impressed because i already knew everything yeah Yeah, i feel like this is the season where like i probably have like the most most fandom knowledge knowledge on like yeah like play by play what all the major plot points are so like nothing was really surprising to me whereas like in season seven i have no clue how they're gonna defeat dick roman or whatever the fuck (laughs) (laughs) yeah so i think yeah. Yeah. I think it did affect how you are because like I feel like in season one, two, and three, whenever big like especially emotional stuff happens, you do mm-hmm. react to it in a I did not expect that to happen here way. In season right. four, I think especially with um Sam's plot in season four, I think mm-hmm. you knew more than me what was happening. Like what was right. gonna happen. So yeah, it it's is a different true. vibe for you this season. Um, you, yeah, do you think? Do you really think it's like you know, like not particularly more than the sum of its parts? Like what's happening this season? Um, okay, I think the aesthetic of it is nice. Like I like the lighting. I think all the things that they did with the angels is very yeah. cool. I liked, you know, Uriel and Zachariah, and obviously Cass, and also Anna. So like. Good concepts were introduced and they looked good while they were doing it. But I don't I don't know if I really felt like a strong emotional connection to the characters of the plotline. Especially because I think season one it's like like we're like in our twenties and we're looking for our dad and we're scared. It's like yeah. okay, like I know what that is. That's relatable. Like, yeah. yeah. But then like and you know, like later it's like uh, Sam has his special ch- the the psychic children arc, which I mean I think is like personal enough to him that I could also feel that. And then it's you know Dean is gonna go to hell and die because of the deal he made and he doesn't want to die. Like okay, I get that too. Now it's like there's like the literal apocalypse, but like yeah. we're just stuck with like these two guys who are kind of both annoying. Like, why don't <laughs> I want the world to end? <laughs> no, I think this is like what Monica was saying. Like, for some people, it would be incredibly appealing that the stakes are higher. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. You just, I think, like you think you fall yeah. on the other side of that equation. Yeah, like I you're think, like, oh, I want it well, to be more personal. Right, I think first off, it's we start with Dean having supposedly been in hell for 40 years, but still like, yeah. knowing how to make burgers and shit, you know what I mean? So, like, we start off with, like, this giant thing happened that's, like, beyond imagining for a lot of people, but, like, 
we aren't able to fully encapsulate what that does to someone at all. Like, Dean's basically the same, except occasionally Mm -hmm. has, like, a flashback. So it's like, you've already set up that there's, like, this big stake that you weren't able to follow through with properly. And now with the apocalypse... Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, like... Like, they just keep saying that the world's gonna end. They keep saying the word apocalypse, but what does that actually mean to them? Mm -hmm. Like... When they're on their regular hunts in the middle of the season, and they're talking to, like, regular people who don't know about hunting, I don't think it's on their minds that, like, these are the people that are gonna be gone when the world ends, because they also, like, don't really bother making any of the people they save particularly, like, likable or 3D. So, I don't know. I think it was was harder for me to care, because the problem of the season felt so abstract. I do want to say, um, just to, like, jump on what Crystal was saying, like, it's always interesting when shows that have, like, otherworldly elements, their, um, protagonists essentially have to deal with something very Mm -hmm. traumatic and terrible, and they don't go to therapy. Like, they don't do anything (laughs) to, like, resolve what's going on in their minds, because having to, like, take the time to, like, work out your issues and do like any self work or like trying to work through your trauma is kind of in in, it like it's inhibiting to the Mm -hmm. plot really like it takes away from the time you can spend like doing the mystery like if you really wanted to get better you would like absolutely stop hunting and like you know take some time away but that also take him away from his family so there's this um sense of yeah purpose there's this sense of like I have to do this like there, I have no other choice you know you ask like what is the purpose of like the apocalypse like what is it it feels so abstract and really like I feel like Sam and Dean have been dealing with like quote unquote apocalypses for like most of their life when they like find their dad find the person that killed their mom you know and now they're introducing like demons and angels it's like this is above yeah. my pay grade and it's just something that like they have no other choice but to take part in this because it's completely right. out of their hands and it's something that's like thrust yeah. upon them so it's like you know the never ending like self impending doom of their quote unquote mm-hmm. profession yeah you know right also like dean gets out of hell and like the day of like castiel is like hey it's me literal god needs you to keep hunting like, I guess we don't yeah. know what would have mm-hmm. happened if he didn't meet Cass, like, right away. Yeah. I suppose Sam was still hunting Lilith because she was still around. She still had her demon war that she was trying to do. So, like, I don't think that Dean would have taken a break. But, yeah, I think it's the fact that they chose this job. They keep getting thrust into these situations. Yeah. They keep being in survival mode so they can't mm-hmm. go to therapy or take a break or whatever. And because they won't fucking tell yeah. anybody, because, like, hunting is such an insular community, and, like, no one wants to tell anybody, anybody else, else, like, the civilians yeah. about, like, ghosts or shit. Like, it's, like, it like they are stuck on, like, it has to be me who does this. Like, I don't know, like, like, institution, most, like, governmental institutions or whatever, like, suck ass, but, like, at least it means that, like... There'd be, like, more than, like, ten people in the U.S. working on the apocalypse. Yeah, I, I, it, it also does just, I think a part of it is just that this is, like, a episodic TV show. Like, I feel like, you know, like, Supernatural, I mean, much like anything, really is a product of, like, its type and its format. I feel like if maybe Supernatural was a more prestige tv show or whatever they would feel um more allowance in terms of developing that character in that way or like dealing with that traumas that the character experiences in that way but because Mm -hmm. like you do have to keep the same vibe with every episode pretty much it's like Mm -hmm. that's really what cements dean here also Oh my god, I completely forgot that the first episode of season four literally ends with we have work for you. Yeah. Like and that's like mm-hmm. what the rest of the season is about. Pretty yeah. much for Dean. It's yeah. like the angels have work for you. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. I forgot that. Yeah. I mean season <laughs> cast said ends that with- sentence and everything. <laughs> yeah. No, but like season four ends with 
Dean in that room because the angels have work for him. And like, yeah, yeah. it is just, they are very much just bonds being pushed around. Although I would say the that is a big part of why season five works. Like season four and season five are a pair, mm-hmm. I feel like. You can't really extricate them from one another the way you can season one, two, and three from each other. Yeah. So we talk about how yeah. like they're yeah. going to be vessels for Michael and Luce for like every episode during season four, even though like they don't know that it's yet. not mentioned yet. Yeah. And also like you know like the whole point of Sam and Dean being like they're just small small parts in this huge huge machine, and then you know by the end of season yeah. five. It's like, no, these are the parts. These small parts are like what makes the thing. And so Sam and Dean can still make a difference. Just like those little toy soldiers in the car. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I I quite I really like that episode, unfortunately. So it does make me emotional every is time it I unfortunate? think about it. I thought a lot of people like think Swan. Is it fortunate? Well, okay. I, I like that. I think episode, it's a it's a neutral condition to have. <laughs> Okay, fine. Well, um, uh, let's do character arcs. So what do you guys think of, like, the character arcs this season? Okay, well, I guess first we have to, like, figure out what the character arcs are. Who are we yeah. starting okay. with? Where do we start with Sam? Well, hunting with Ruby. Yeah, Sam starts hunting Lilith yeah. with Ruby as a revenge yeah. thing because she caused Dean's death and also because she's trying to, like, have the demon war on earth that they were yeah. supposedly fighting in season three but that i forget about constantly yeah um, and i mean season three ends with sam being like okay ruby what is it now like you said i can do something what is it like in the last minute and ruby was like it's too late dean is still going to hell mm-hmm. so i think that does inform a lot of what sam is doing like he can't yeah give himself the ability to or the opportunity to think of like to think it through quote unquote because mm-hmm. like i mean he thought that one true and now dean is in hell kind of situation yeah or it was like he basically already committed to like doing whatever it is that ruby said would give him powers like in yeah. the last minutes before dean's death and it was too late but, like, it's not too late to get revenge on Lilith. So, okay, hand over that demon blood sippy cup. Yeah. Okay, where does right. he end this season? Not sippy cup. <laughs> sippy cup. Exactly. <laughs> where does he end this season? Well, okay. I mean, so, he ends it miserable. But I mean, he also yeah, ends I mean, season Dean four comes miserable. Back, uh, season five which, miserable. Did we, have we really discussed what it means that Dean comes back, like, to him? To Sam? Yeah, to I Sam. I don't know. What is there to discuss? What What are your thoughts on it? I mean, obviously, it was an unexpected thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, very unexpected. Yeah. He'd already committed himself to being, like, this, like, revenge-driven, just, like, completely, like, lost in the killing Lilith sauce because of Dean's death thing. So, like, like this yeah. sort of throws a wrench into, like, the narrative of his life that he's... Mm-hmm. decided right but like he does mm-hmm. continue yeah, that's like drinking demon blood he does continue pursuing lilith but you know as but now the main says, issue is that dean is also here 21 is <laughs> yeah. like hey like i'm back like what is this revenge thing for now um yeah i think we're supposed to think that at this point like he just like is addicted to demon blood to the point where like the revenge is not even is not the primary reason, like, already in 401? Or at what point do we think, like, he, like, made that switch? I don't know. I mean, he does stop in metamorphosis, right? Like, that's a that's big deal. That's true. He does stop in metamorphosis. Does he not he comes start back up again in until Chris, Chris Angel? Angel. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so he he wasn't, like, that set on the, yeah, demon blood thing until after Chris Angel. So, like, he had an eight episode interim. So Yeah. And then like we do we think his whole like and we think his whole like arrogance, like I can do this better than Dean can thing starts after four twelve. It's interesting because mm-hmm. I think like 
after Dean leaves, he's kind of like trying to become his own man, right? Yeah, almost. So it's a little weird because, like, the Sammy that like we know from previous seasons would have tried to find a way to get his brother out of hell, or would have tried to like break, like, go to hell himself and then break him out from yeah. there, or he would have been mourning or sad and instead he decides to become he does say like, that he tried those things like we see him like yeah. try to make he a demon that. deal well we we see footage of him trying to make a demon deal in the flashbacks yeah of 409. yeah um he yeah. tells dean also that he literally tried to reopen like the gate to hell that was open yeah at the end of season two <laughs> yeah. i guess we don't so know funny. if he actually did that but like pretty whacked yeah. up thing to like make up if you didn't actually do it like that's not something i would be proud of telling someone i did i mean i think like fundamentally what what happened to sam was like dean leaving did change him like Mm -hmm. we we enter season four sam is different even more different than dean i would say jack and the impala and everything (laughs) yeah like he is even more different than dean i think uh, yeah, even and, though you Dean know, was like, literally torturing people for 10 years and tortured for 30 years. Exactly. But, like, you know, like, how Sam kept on insisting throughout the half, the tail end of the season that, like, Sam, uh, Dean is different and, like... Yeah, he came back He home. can't do it because he's weak and something changed him in hell. But really, it's, like, Sam Sam's changed. Sam's different. Yeah, yeah Dean's Sam is like different. the same. Dean is the same. It's just Sam has changed so much that... In comparison to Dean, he thinks one of them changed and it's Dean when it's him, really. Well, I mean, as I said, I think season four and five are paired together. So, Mm -hmm. like, this specific arc of Sam is not yet done. I think Uh it ends in season five. So It ends when he decides that he can, like, defeat Lucifer in his brain. (laughs) Yeah. So, I feel like... For Sam, it is a continuing arc. We need to talk right. about Dean. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Why there, did I say it like wait, There's that. nothing well, we else need that we have to him. say about Sam, Sam uh, Winchester. Okay. Well, what else do you want to say, Crystal? Um, I don't like. I mean, this is the second season of his relationship with Ruby. Like, there's there's got to be something there. I don't, I don't know. Look, is there? I. Because between the two of us, you are the Sam and Ruby person. That's true. I feel like Sam Ruby's larger in my head than it is in the show. Like, I feel like the show itself doesn't really... Reckon with it ...do much. much with, like... Yes. Yeah, like, they don't, like, really, like, give it, like, the depth or the seriousness of, like, an abusive relationship depiction, like... But they also, like don't really they just don't there's not really a lot of feelings in the yeah. show between them there's it's there ruby it's very is like they're both more means blood. to each other's end yeah yeah i mean i think season three ruby has more like emotional whatever whatever than season four which is very right. surprising thing to say yeah. but also i mean i just like season three of ruby a lot more so that's why probably mm, she is me. a better actor <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, i okay. mean monica do you do you have what you are your feelings on Sam genevieve padalecki is a is a like a good actor like because i feel like a lot of people as ruby on as ruby specifically thought that she was like <laughs> quite wooden and i feel like gray and i felt that way too but also like she yeah. is a beloved character like in her brunette ruby iteration so I'm curious about what mm. if there's like other opinions what are on your her tactics? acting. Yeah, I feel like she w- is very good. Um, to be perfectly honest, I liked her in season four, and she really brought like something interesting to the show. She reminds me a lot of like Bella, except Bella was like kind of sassy and snarky, yeah. and she was fun. Yes. And I like that about her because she gives like anti hero, so you want to root for her. But Ruby is very clearly like she's a demon, she's a bad person, and we know that she's bad. And Sam knows that she's bad, but he can't like get away from her. And it just kind of falls in line that this is an abusive relationship. It's not like I don't know if the writers intentionally meant to write it because a lot of the things, because like there could be a if the writers 
meant to intentionally depict an yeah. abusive relationship. I feel like they should have intentionally depicted, like, Sam talking about, like, bringing up more, like, when people are addicted to stuff in TV shows, they always say, like, oh, I can stop at any time. Or they'll say things like, oh, it's, like, it's okay. I'm better with it. I know how to manage it. I know how to take care of it. Which he does. He's like, you know, the blood, I'm saving people. Yeah. Like, we don't have to kill the people. Like, we can all have to, like, we can, like, still save, like, the people inside and blah, blah, blah. And, um... It's weird because even though he says that, he's still like, you know, kind of destroying his body in order to do it. And it's just like this strange, like, give and take that's going on. And I feel like in season four, we're seeing Sam, who's like super nice, very helpful, down to earth guy who is willing to work with a demon and eventually falls in love with a demon and he knows she's a demon there's no good in her well i mean even the opinion that sam is in love with ruby is not like yeah universally it's not really held i don't even know if i believe that can you can you in speak the text more? of the show no. yeah i don't think he's in love with her i think that because she makes him feel powerful as she's like giving him kind of like i don't know like a big head she's like yeah you got this like he there's a reliance somehow on has that. like yeah there's a reliance on it and also like she's hot true. and she's there so if a guy if you make a guy feel good enough for a long enough time you're always around and you just happen to be hot he's just gonna want to like get in your pants you know so it's not that he's, <laughs> he's attracted to her this if he's true. in love with her yeah. i doubt it yeah. Though, yeah. I mean, she I was feel- the one to pressure him into sex first. Yeah. Yeah. But I think she that- is, like, using, yeah, something. Like, I think that there She's is an attraction. She's absolutely using him, and we all see it him. That he did yeah. not want to act on, but then, right, she forced the matter in order to make him more dependent on her. It is, I don't know, mm-hmm. the Sam and Ruby stuff is incredibly interesting. I think... The Ruby for me is most beloved in season four in the episodes with Anna because mm, I yeah. feel like those are the ones that really, like, at least at that point of the story, cement her as like she's on our side or whatever. Right. And yeah, like, even an yeah. angel, like, says Ruby's different from the others. She's nice. She saved me. Yeah. And so, like, I do think that is like a good turning point in her character although after that i just really don't think they do anything much with her like i think yeah. she just becomes like a plot person a person who to yeah go move the plot and yeah, a real body I don't of a character <laughs> i do feel like a little bit like mm, i think that's also a big part of why i at by the end of this season i was like uh like ruby has a lot of promise etc and like i think you know if they brought her back in the show which they kind of do in season 14 again but like not really very briefly um, mm-hmm. yeah like there are interesting avenues to take this character but alas they don't so it's forever yeah. going to be what is like either forgotten a lot about her season three characterization or they've like decided They've, that you can yeah. just think that she was manipulating them like the whole whole time but like right there's the scene at the end of like malleus Malficaro, is it where mm-hmm. she tells dean like i'm helping you because i remember what it's like to be human and stuff like that she tells sam a similar thing like in the 409 flashbacks and, yeah. like, that is an interesting concept, but I guess at the end we're just supposed to think she was lying the whole time and every time, time she was helping them, like, in season three was to lead Sam there to There was point. a motive. Which is also, like, fine, like, if there's, like, depth to that. Yeah. Like, if we, like, understood why she cared so much about, like, raising Lucifer again... Or, like, yeah. her feelings about her role in the matter. Like, she gets a little bit of a monologue in 422 about how she's proud of herself for having done this. But, like, I don't know. Like, I, I want to know why this is important to her. And I also want to know more about her, like, past as a witch and all that shit. Because they made it such a big reveal in season three. Yeah. 
And they just sort of drop all those threads with her and have Dean stab her to death. In season three, you said, like, in Malleus Maleficarum, mm. when she said that she remembered what it felt like to be human, yeah. it was um, interesting because she, like, warned the Winchesters. Um, she tried to warn them of, like, a witch coven, you know, that was being controlled by Atheroth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, her former yeah. I like, feel like witch, sh- like, teacher person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like she was doing that to gain their trust. Yeah. Almost. You know, she was trying to, like, get them on her side. Yeah. And it's most likely that she had always intended to bring back Lucifer. Mm-hmm. And she probably saw something in Sam that he hadn't seen in himself yet. And she was just like, you know, what would be more irony than the two brothers that are going around killing like demons witches werewolves to bring lucifer back to earth and start the apocalypse so i feel like she's been playing the long game yeah she also yeah had some kind of partnership with the zazel didn't she where she said that he passed on the information to her about how sam had been specially selected to like play honestly part like in all of that is so murky like the azazel yeah. ruby yeah, like it's just Lilith, dropped yeah. in this connection is so murky. at the end of season yeah. four that is yeah. not clear like i don't know i would love to see some flashbacks of her and like azazel like eating fries together and him being like okay and then you should probably do this and then like yeah. tell sam to drink from your veins and she's like yes that would be so fun and silly all right writing that down yeah i mean have you is this true uh monica have mm. you heard this like there was this like thing i read once i'm not sure if it's true at all that like the reason why ruby had to be killed at the end of season four is because Jared and hmm. um, Genevieve started dating. And so they didn't want to have Sam and Ruby be continue being a thing in the show when the characters, when the people playing them are dating. Have you heard this? Have you ever heard this? I did see the rumor on Tumblr. Yeah. And the thing with Supernatural is that they were one of those shows that would start airing while the show's filming right. because the show is so yeah. long. Yeah. It was impossible for them to like film all the shows in like the full season and then air it. Yeah. So that could be the case. But I think what really happened was that Ruby was meant to be a one season character the same way like Lilith has been. Because like yeah. you could bring in like, a single a character, period, but if yeah. she's a yeah, if she's not on the Winchester side, if she's not a good person, then she's going to die. You know what? She is a good person. She may die. So yeah. it's possible that, like, Ruby was always intending for Sam to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And him feeling guilty that he couldn't take down Lilith and his brother still went to jail. She went to hell. She was like, oh, yeah, I got him right where I want him. And then, you know, he was like... Yeah. And then she was like, yeah, I mean, I'm going to raise Lucifer. And, like, they knew. They had, the warriors had to know, like, if Ruby is going to raise Lucifer, then she's going to die this yeah. season. So it just, that is it was what awesome. it was. And I feel like, mm. yeah, and I think them dating just kind of happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have been talking about the father, like, he's so much in this episode. But I think, honestly, like, that kind of, like, something happened outside factors that contributed to the character dying or whatever is more applicable to Anna, really, than oh, absolutely, uh, Ruby. God, yeah. poor Anna. Right, Monica. Like you've heard that, like, so Anna was sort of meant to stay on, like, as the cast character, the cast but of then the show. The yeah. audience all liked cast so much more that they just like diminished Anna's role and then kill her in season five. Oh. Yeah, like, Cass was supposed to die in season four. Yeah. Oh. And then got brought back in season five. It is yeah. it is fascinating so, how they do... I don't know. I like, feel it because of how, like, right, like, Gray, like, both of us said that Anna, like, shows up in 420 and 421. 21. And, like, yeah. she's, like, like... She like she doesn't contribute yeah. anything to either of those episodes. She's just there to like drop information that like they already knew, and I think it's yeah. because the actress was like contracted to be on more episodes. Oh uh, yeah, and then like eventually when they were like actually we want Castiel for this kind of a role, 
then like she like still had to film those episodes so they didn't have anything to give her to do or whatever so yeah they just they they flattened her out that is interesting what you pointed out monica that like supernatural is a show that is writing while still air while airing like right yeah i think uh-huh. just why things like cast getting or brought still back filming. in season seven yeah. and what well, like because like the audience was like not enjoying that he was gone for so long that's why something like yeah. that could have happened it that that format basically gave us cast back in mm. season seven yeah well is that is, is that all good for sam <laughs> sure <laughs> Okay, let's talk about Dean. Oh, well, let's talk I, about uh, Dean. Okay, I am curious about how Sam's guilt over raising Lucifer is going to affect him in season five. Okay, that's my last. No, that's for season say. five. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. What is the Dean situation? I, I don't, don't know. If he existed know. and was annoying. I, you guys can talk about him. It's because like when Dean is endearing, he is endearing, and when he is annoying, he is so annoying. And in season four, I feel mm. like he is a lot more annoying than he is endearing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like this season, especially because we did a break to watch Good Omens for three months. <laughs> but <laughs> during that time, I was thinking about Dean a lot. I was like reminiscing on season one, Dean, etc. I was like, I, I, I just had this like extreme fondness for him, and then we went back to the show to Supernatural, and it was like, oh, this is not like the dean that i like like season Mm. four i mean because sam and dean like i said like they have to maintain like a status quo but also they do in fact actually change also it's just incredibly like gradual and sometimes not intentional i feel like like it's the external forces that cause that instead of like them as characters but like i feel like dean is like Season one and two, Dean, extremely endearing. And then it like dips down very, very low for a while. And then it rises back up until, you know, season 15. So, like, I feel like right now, me and Dean, we're not good. We're, we're having yeah, our divorce on the era. Outs. Yeah. He's sleeping on the couch, etc. So, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. yeah. Well. I don't know. I mean, Monica, what do you, do you think of season four, Dean? Like, season four specifically. I feel like season four, Dean, is the beginning of, like, grouchy Dean. Yes. You know, like, grumbly Dean. You know, he's just so... He, he's, like, not... I don't know how to say this, like, pent up. Yes. You know, he doesn't talk about his feelings. He doesn't open up, really. Like, he went to hell. Yeah. Like, he literally went through, like suffering like the worst kind of suffering possible and it's because the show won't allow them to talk about it it's kind of like like he was about to like become a demon like that was his like biggest fear and now here he is on earth he's back to hunting again and like the season prior he knew that he was gonna die in a year so he was almost like reckless and almost like suicidal in a way but he was just kind of like in his head like oh i can't die before i'm supposed to so like if i do something really stupid on this hunt it's gonna be fine because like i'm not gonna die you know not this time around and now that like dean's been to hell it's kind of like well how does he feel what's going on with him that he's gone through something that traumatic like how does he view hunting now like it has his things has things changed for him yeah because i try to think about it like a soldier coming back from war you know, so when soldiers come back from war, they're either, like, heartbroken and, like, you know, kind of, like, down and sad and they either hate their country or they come back and they're just, like, even more of, like, a red-blooded American. Yes. And it seemed like Dean is, like, the second one, but he still feels like... He feels more you know, attached why to hunting, do I have to go? Think? Yeah, he feels more attached to hunting, you know, because... Um, I th- it's just what he knows. Like, there's nothing else he can do, really. I think, honestly, it, like, but- this, what you said brought up something interesting in me, which is, like, like, is he afraid to die now? Is there more of a survival instinct? Because, like, right. he knows, he knows what where he's going. Like. Yeah? I don't, I've, that is an interesting thought. I think, um, 
I don't know. Like, you're right. Season 4 is the beginning of this thing. Which is why, like, as I said, a lot of my reminiscing was, like, season 1 to 3. So, I mean, to be fair, Sam also is, like, this is the beginning of Sam being something else. Like, the his, like, attitude towards the later half of the show is... Uh, mm-hmm. very much informed by all of the experiences of this season. So, the difference is with Dean, we don't see it happen on screen. Like, the thing that changes him, we don't see it happen necessarily on screen. Well, you know, the entire season is dedicated to what happens to Sam. So, yeah. yeah that's true. And it's ironic, too, because Dean literally finds out that he's, like, chosen by God. And I feel like this hurt Sam even yeah. more because he, out of the brothers, was like the one openly a believer of God. Yeah. And he's tried to be a good person, but because like he starts drinking demon blood, he's somehow seen as like defective. Yeah. And I would have to say that's a little like I don't want to say it's harsh, but it's like, damn, he was the he was the one who's actually who actually like believes yeah. Yeah. in the big guy upstairs. And like Dean literally couldn't care less. <laughs> Like, he does not want to do this. And it's just like, the angel's just like, we don't care. Like, he asked for you specifically. So, like, yeah. Yeah. You gotta get the program. In terms of, like, Dean never talking about his feelings, I think the two moments that I recall are in Monster Movie, he's talking to Jamie about. To that girl, yeah. Yeah, about how, like, Mm -hmm. he went through a near death experience and he's back now and sort of. He wants to make it worth it. Yeah, he wants to make it worth it, and he wants to help people through hunting. So I think you're right that he's rededicated to hunting after this. And then yeah. in 415, he's talking to Tessa. Dean can only open up to, like, to one-off, yeah. like, love interest women. <laughs> like, wild. Okay. When he opens up to Sam, I feel like it's a completely different vibe. It's like, yes. um, I don't know, it was like, this is what happened to me. Yeah, and, and then they both I wish sit it with didn't. it. <laughs> which is like yeah. a different thing than like this is how it changed me, which is his conversation with Tessa and Jamie. Yeah. So Tessa he's he says something else about, you know, second chance, and then he says specifically yeah. that like he like it's not that he feels I honored, w- but, he like, said there's there a way that, like, he to, like, wished he just died in season yeah. two already. But, like, because he didn't, he just has to keep on going because yeah. this is the situation now. And he says that the idea that, like, heaven saw something good in him despite all the torture he did in hell, like, matters to him and that he does want to, like, he does care about, like, the work that's been given to him because, yeah. like, he was brought back by heaven who, like, some somehow, like, forgave him for the torture in some way. Yeah. But, like, that's all, like, truly, right. yeah. before he finds out, like, I guess, okay, in season five, I'm assuming he's gonna be processing the fact that the thing he was telling himself, that, like, this is why I'm back, and so that means it's good that I'm back. Like, the fact that that's a lie, he'll probably be processing that in season five, I'm assuming. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, they don't really process in Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly i think you know one of the most fascinating um episode sequence choices they made was putting the tessa episode right before on the head of a pin because you know like dean in the in that episode was like oh i'm here for a reason because god is like you know yeah. like i was saved from the torture and the torturing because god had worked for me and then, yeah. like, on the head of the pin, it's like, oh, actually, the we work have work, is and the work is someone. do more torture. <laughs> yeah. Which must have sucked so hard. It's true. But, he yeah. viewed being saved as, like, a redemption from the torture. So the fact that it's like, maybe we saved you because we like that you did torture and we want you to do more torture is not yeah. a good feeling. Yeah. Do we have anything more to say about Dean? I well, I'm gone. there's his I relationship like, with I, Sam that like sours immensely this season. Okay, of course. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> back I to Sam, just, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, no. I don't know, I, you like, know what I was gonna say? I was gonna say. Well, his relationship with Cass we can talk about in the Cass part, <laughs> but we literally no. can. Um, I mean, well, we with can. the Sam and Dean. What's the situation? I don't know. They're, they're, you know, it's terrible right now. 
and mostly yeah. because of Dean. Yeah, I agree with that one. I know some people would not, but I think it's all Dean's fault, mostly. Yeah. Um, yeah. God, it's bad right away. Like, he fucking punches Sam in metamorphosis. Like, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. I think maybe nothing. there is also the fear that, like, you know, Dean was afraid of becoming a demon. And, mm-hmm. it, like, as Monica said, it was, like, his biggest fear. Like, Ruby told him, like, I'm a demon because I was human and then I sorted in hell and cetera. And And yeah. was afraid that was going to happen to him. And now Sam is here drinking demon blood, foreseeably maybe turning into a demon. So, yeah, I, don't I, mean, know. I think that's probably part a, of it. But I don't, of it. they just yeah. seem to have completely forgotten about Everything. that like after 416 yeah. like the writers like we have like dean's whole like in 421 he's like i'm gonna continue heroically enacting medical abuse on my brother because i draw the line at him turning into a monster and at no point like you'd think the fact that like he did torture and like he's ashamed of doing torture and that's like related to demonness would come up like if he had just never like, one line about how like I fucking wish someone, like, went down in hell and, like, chained me up in a room so that I couldn't torture people anymore or some random bullshit like that. Like, I feel like that would have brought together his, like... His arc, arc yeah. A lot better than, like, whatever the fuck he was doing in 421. Yeah. Okay. Well, can we talk about cast now? <laughs> oh, sure, Yeah. Yeah. So, what are our thoughts on Cass? I mean, this is his beginning, so... Mm-hmm. And he's new. He's new. I mean, Cass's arc is actually very clearly delineated. Is that a word? Mm-hmm. Yes. But it's very clear, like, what they're trying to do when they were doing it. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's less, like, room to waver, because he's new. And this is, like, yeah. the first time we're meeting him. And, like... You know, with Dean, it's like he already was a complex character going into this. Sam, too. And Cass mm-hmm. is like, well, he is, you know, God's angel. And now he is turning into something else. Wow. Yeah. Monica, uh, what are your thoughts on Destiel? What's, what's your situation? Well, oh, in wait, that are one? we there already? No, no, no. I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm just asking. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna be honest, when Cass was first introduced, I was like, I was super excited because upon watching the show from the very beginning, I had to Google, like, when does Castiel when is he introduced to the show? Yeah. And then, you know, the Google was like, season four, and I was like, okay, bet. But I think, like, the previous episodes, of course, previous seasons did a good job of, like, setting up the show towards the apocalypse. So, when Dean's, like, you know, crawling out of the field in the grass and he's like crawling his way out of hell it's like oh snap and i'm like ooh, cassio's gonna come in at any minute he comes in the first season i'm like hell yeah and i love season four cast because he adheres strictly to angelic doctrine as yeah in, like he has like an unwavering commitment to what heaven wants and his interactions to deed are so stoic yes <laughs> like so funny Crystal because Dean is just a normal it. person Crystal has oh, a term for it he's yes. statue molding like he's yeah. acting like a statue in a lot of his uh, stuff with Dean and like I do think that is yes. so true yeah I do want to say I'm glad that Cass is stayed I feel like with Anna it would have been cool to see her stay but the thing is with like Anna she fell into, like, the born sexy yesterday trope where, because they're angels, they don't understand, like, humans and how humans work, like, life on Earth. So they only know, like, the way heaven works and what heaven tells them about Earth. And the fact that, like, oh. Anna slept with She lived there for 20 with Dean, years, like, though. Like, she, she was, was yeah, like, she was, born into a human, was human body. She had her, like, past her parents and all that shit. So, like, mm-hmm. I think she she had been living on Earth experiencing it fully for Human-ness. 20 years i i do we're talking yeah. about the okay go on we're talking we're talking about the redhead right? yeah. yes yeah because anna 
Yeah. Okay. Right, because she chose okay. to fall from heaven, like, and be and then, born. Yeah, as she a was human. born to human parents. And yeah, she yeah, like she had a childhood. Like they talk about her at age two screaming about how she's scared that her dad will kill Gonna her because it's like be killed by her dad. Yeah. Her her Crazy. like god memories coming in or whatever. But I mean, she was only twenty though. Like. Like in her mind <laughs> at the point that she sleeps with Dean, yeah. and I think that that's kind of iffy. Yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. also a thing that I felt. Yeah, mm. yeah. You guys, you're right. You're Sorry. right. I was just, I was just gonna say mm-hmm. that, like, I feel like if Anna stayed on the show, she would have fell into the boring, sexy yesterday trope, which is basically when like an alien or like you know a girl loses her memory or like they're not from Earth, and so they depend on like the first man they've ever met to guide them. And then they somehow see this man as also like a love interest, so to speak. And the only, the earliest example I have of it that I've seen so recently is um, Bella Baxter in the movie, poor things, Mm -hmm. which is the newest movie with Emma Emma Stone. Stone. Yeah. It kind of falls into that. Yeah. So I'm kind of glad that Anna wasn't really, included in i was just gonna say like castiel is like very igna- like in en- enigma enigmatic I- enigmatic yeah uh, yeah. En- yeah yeah fun word. word as a character <laughs> yeah as a character but i feel like if he was a woman then he would kind of be like Anna. yeah so i think having yeah having two characters that are kind of like not fully there is kind of like that's a little too much one is enough you know i do think I think a more uh, direct point of what you're trying to make is like fundamentally because Anna is a woman they would feel the need to make her a love interest and that is like you know Supernatural is a terrible show who handles their female characters incredibly terribly uh, Mm -hmm. a lot of the time and like because what they did was they were like, okay, we're going to bring Anna in and she's going to be a type of character and also she's going to be Dean's love interest. And because the love interest didn't really particularly work, like they didn't have much chemistry, uh, Anna and Dean, uh, they were like, okay, let's just throw away the entire character. And that is incredibly irritating to me because like you're the one who dictated that all of your female characters need to be like, a love interest or like a mother figure you know like mm. you're the one who made that um like category right. that like you know and it's like you're right that because Cass well is a guy like there is a uh there is a feeling of he's not gonna fall into the usual tropes of whatever whatever because he's not gonna be treated like a love in the rest. It is just uh annoying because it is like a like that's supernatural's fault. <laughs> you know, like that's not because of Anna as a character. That's of course that's because right. the the show just deals with it so terribly. Like me, yeah. like, me and Crystal, like whenever Anna shows up, would talk constantly about like, oh, where could have they taken this character? Blah blah blah. But the thing is, supernatural would that not constantly. Ha- I feel like we haven't talked about it sufficiently. Really? You think so? Well, yeah. Like when we do that, it's like, oh, what would happen to Anna? Blah blah blah. Where could they take this character? But the thing is, supernatural would just never do it because they have already set their mind on what Anna is supposed to be. And because that doesn't work, it's like, well, she couldn't be anything else. Unlike Cass, who's like, I mean, they will try many things with Cass's character through the years. And it's like, oh, it doesn't work. Well, let's just bring back the blah, blah. Let's just, you know. And so, I, you know, Supernatural fundamentally is a show that gives its male characters more benefit of the doubt when something doesn't work. Yeah, and I that mean, is a source yeah. of gripe for me. Also, like, regarding, like, the love interest thing didn't work out, so they threw her away. Like, the thing is, like, 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 obviously, like, the idea that, like, angels don't experience romantic or sexual attraction is, like, untrue. And also, I think, like, kind of like a, like a dumb idea to work with. But, like, I feel like there was ground for them to just go, like, Angel Anna is a new character. And, like, therefore doesn't feel the way about Dean that, like, human Anna did. 
and thus like we don't have to put her in the love interest role anymore and she can like have a new like Thing, role yeah. in the story but they threw her away instead like in 420 like she shows up and dean's like hey you're looking good and she just goes not appropriate not the Dean. time <laughs> yeah. like so like like yeah if the love interest thing didn't work out which it didn't like they had like a perfectly fine avenue to go like well it's no longer an option for either of them okay well now what do we do with this character yeah but yeah, i don't even know how it. yeah i mean like ugh, many people have said this but like the reason why supernatural does end up becoming like gay is because they would only you know like because it's misogynistic. I mean, I don't know. Like, they wouldn't develop any of their female characters. They wouldn't let them stay for long. And so, yeah. like, I people mean, will just... what happened to all the pussy on Supernatural? Oh, exactly. And it's Cassiel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, they just yeah. had to love interestify him at the end because they were out of other options. <laughs> Yeah. But he was he was always I feel like Destiel he was, was always there. Yeah. But okay, I think I am I do wish that he says he's expressing doubts in four oh seven already. Yeah. And then like they just don't do anything with it for like nine episodes. I feel like they do. What what do oh, they do? Okay. About well, never mind. You're right. Nine 16. episodes. Yes, they did. Yeah. sixteen minus seven, baby. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I was fine I, with it. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like it is essential for Cass's character that it is the last episode of this season that he does his turn. You know, mm-hmm. um, that he gets turned around. I also wish he and, had a better reason to get turned around in 416 than seeing Dean do torture makes me sad because I want to fuck him, but... Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Um, yeah, I feel like there's not really much to discuss about Cass yet. Because yeah, it's he just... talks about his feelings out loud to Dean and Anna, so... There's nothing yeah. to really, like, tease out. Like, we, we know yeah. what he thinks. He's pretty clear-cut at this point. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm so excited yeah. for Cass next season. They're going to be Dream Free Will, yeah. the three of them. Mm-hmm. I do think it's, like, great that Cass, who is, like, a new character in the season, did find it within himself to, like, question, like, what's going on in heaven? Yeah. Why is this happening? Mm-hmm. And in the last minute, he... Um, he decides to like help Dean yeah. to avert the apocalypse mm-hmm. because he's influenced by Dean. Yeah, and he starts questioning like his divine orders and like under- trying to like figure out like like what is free will? Like what would that be like? You know, yeah. to defy heaven and help Dean avert the apocalypse. It's this act of rebellion. Yeah, that is very different from like the character that we're introduced to as Castiel and like bringing in a lot of complexity for his character. It is like the the foundation of who he is and who he's going to be in the next couple of seasons. So we're just starting to see Castiel kind of like get out of his shell. He's still like, you know, very stoic and like still very much like naive to the way of the world. But he's navigating what it means to like have morality and like free will and like what that looks like for him. Yeah. And like season four is just like the beginning for him. Yeah. I wish we did yeah. why he didn't want the world to end though. Like I know it's because just like world people. ending equals bad, but like okay, like yeah, do we see him care about people though? Because if there's anything to die for, it's this. <laughs> it's the okay, he yeah, has a okay, bond with Dean. Been, like it's literally his I, bond with okay, Dean. Okay, I don't, I don't. Is that it? Like Dean doesn't yeah. want the world to end, so I just won't make the world yeah. end. Because but he was already doubting he, in 407. Of course. There's, you know, he's doubting, he's doubting. But here is a person that he relies on to be right about this thing. And he's saying that this is the right thing to do. And I do think that means something. Like, if you're yeah, on the fence having someone... Why is he relying someone, on Dean to be right about things? Do we see him looking towards he's Dean hot. as a moral I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I did hear what you said, but it's not a true statement. So, like, 
I don't see how that's relevant. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I just, like okay, tough. like what what's the textual backing of him viewing Dean as a moral authority? Well, I mean, it's just, you know, him being able to tell Dean that um you know, like I don't know what's right or wrong here. And then yeah. Dean in that moment being like, "Well, I think this is what was right and this is what was wrong." And mm-hmm. I think in that moment he does internalize that. Also, he always like sets himself parallel to Dean. He's always yeah. like, "Yeah, um, like do you swear to your like, dad, my yeah, dad?" Yeah, you know, like dads, he always yeah. does that. Yeah, and so I think he does see himself as like you know a mirror to Dean. Well, okay. Well, why does he think that? What does he see of himself and Dean? Oh, sometimes just the, he just the father do. relationship. <laughs> I think no, maybe the father relationship. Okay, the father and also relationship. just like just a weird admiration. Like he went to hell, battled mm-hmm. his way through hell to save yeah. this guy. So like there yeah, is going to be orders. an aspect of there is something with this guy that is special that I did all that. To get to him. But okay, it, it's because he was under orders, though. So it's like, heaven thinks there's something special about this guy. Like, But, like, there are ways to go with, like, rejecting heaven that involve, like, well, if heaven thinks he's special and I don't trust heaven anymore, like, why should I trust him? Like, there are different directions you can go with that. Like, why did the direction that Cass chose, why did he choose that one? I think it's just at some point he had a profound bond with Dean. Like, <laughs> Dean, no, I mean, like, you know, if it was anything, I would give anything not to have you do this in 416. Mm-hmm. Like, that's sincere. And it's like, at that point, Dean has ceased being an instrument of heaven and more of like a person that Cass is like, has a personal connection with. Yeah, like, at the beginning of the season, like, you wouldn't imagine Cass, season four, episode two, saying, if it was something, I would give anything not to have you do this to Dean, if he asked Dean to torture Dan. Because they haven't gone through anything yet together. Like, Mm, at on Earth. Yeah, they have been through much together, you and I. Oh my god. (laughs) Yeah, crazy line still. But yeah, I think... um, the beginning is like, well, that's a guy I saved. And so it's interesting that heaven wanted me to do that and that I went through all that stuff to do that. And mm-hmm. then towards the end of the season, it's like everything else that we went through together. I was just going to say that I feel like Dean is the only person that Cass has had like a true connection with. Yeah. Because all the ages are very much the same. They're all very stoic. They're all kind of like to the point. They're all very matter of fact. They only do what heaven tells them to do. And he hasn't been exposed to any kind of vulnerability until, until he met Dean. I think, so I feel like yeah. with Dean, he he really moved him. I think okay, I, I mean, think he has a connection with Uriel and Anna. Like, yeah, I do think like, that uh, is something. But yeah, um, I mean, I think it's a different connection. Yeah, but, because yeah. with Uriel, I, I think Uriel is asking something different of him than what Dean was asking. Anna was asking something similar, but Anna was already tainted as like automatically right, bad by fallen. heaven due to because she is fallen. And I think Dean straddles that line of like asking Cass the thing that Cass that appeals to Cass the most. And um again, like being like good in Cass's head because I went through all that trouble to save you. Mm. Yeah, I do think that a component a component of Cass's connection to Dean that I haven't thought about that much earlier is the fact that like like this is happening at the same time as like Cass's other relationships deteriorating. Like Yeah, you're he right. He had his like, garrison, his like, he had garrison his family, got killed. But then like yeah, first like Anna chooses to fall to Earth and like yeah she's gone and he's been like working with her and like she's been his sister for like thousands and thousands of years so like that had to have shaken him up at first and also probably made him think about earth and humanity yeah. a little differently just the fact that she chose to do that at all and then members of his garrison keep getting killed off like weekly because of the apocalypse and then like the and also, he's in charge of his, his garrison and too. shit now. Yeah. Yeah, he's in charge of it now. 
and then the Uriel he gets thing demoted, happens. Demoted, and then the Uriel thing happens, where it's someone he's trusted for thousands of years, but who has differing thoughts on humanity than him. Turns out to have yeah. been betraying everyone the whole time and being like the cause of the like many other deaths in their garrison. Like seven was it? Like that yeah. week or something? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, his like, social life was dying, but also his <laughs> corporate life was dying. He did get demoted, so like I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is like a time where like, yeah, where like he would over prioritize his connection to Dean and his head because it's the only thing he has yeah. like during i mean this we've discussed this when with the line mm-hmm. like we've been through much together you and i because like yeah we were like they have he it. has it but like but maybe like, to to cast, cast, it does yeah. mean like a lot like this is a lot for him mm-hmm. well i think that's all for Cass. wait, wait, wait I'm, I'm still curious about his feelings about humanity because we get like bits of it in 407 and then we don't later and i want to know more i think cast and humanity mm-hmm. is a situation that will happen more in five and six specifically like i think those seasons have a more of a focus on that because cast just interacts with more humans like right. who, which humans does cast interact with here sam oh, sometimes Sam-D. and dean mostly so like i feel like like well, maybe Bobby gets a less. fake Bobby's voice on the phone in four. This is true. <laughs> but yeah, he and Bobby could I... be making out sloppy in that junkyard <laughs> every day. We don't know. <laughs> this is true. Well, um, yeah, because currently he likes humans in the abstract, as he says to like Uriel. Like it's blasphemous of it's you to God's like, call humans like what monkeys he or whatever. Yeah, because yeah, they're God's creations, but. As his relationship to God, like, becomes more and more tenuous, I'm curious about, like, the new reasons that he'll have for loving humanity. Yeah, at this point, Cass is still like, heaven wants to kill all humans or whatever, but God doesn't. Like, that's still his perspective, really. Just like he goes into season. Yes, it's true. He goes into season five thinking this. So, yeah, that's the situation. Mm. Well, yeah. Well, let's do uh, fave eps. Monica said something about yellow fever. Or is that your fave ep? Or I is do that like an yellow that you fever. Just like. I like it. Yeah. I like yellow fever, but I don't know if it's my favorite. I mean, I'm gonna. You're gonna have to come back to me on that because I'm not sure if I know my favorite quite yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have a least favorite? I yeah. feel like a lot of times that's easier to say. A least favorite? I have one, Mm. actually. Like, at the cuff. Like, it's wishful thinking. It's so bad. Oh, God, it's so bad. (laughs) It's so bad. Take it out. Get rid of it. Like, (laughs) I do. The bear. The bear. Yes, the bear. Oh, the Mm -hmm. bear was fine. The bear was fine. Yeah, the bear, that was silly goofy. I loved the child actress that they got for Audrey. That was fine. The rest of the episode was horrible. (laughs) Throwing up. (laughs) Um, yeah. I don't know. Let's. What other terrible episodes are there? Monster movie was a little bit. Wait, bad. should we like say why we hate wishful thinking, or will will the audience just understand? Well, why do we hate it? Okay. Well, I think there's two things. The first thing is like the misogyny and horror in like the storyline of is her name Hope? Like, yeah the the woman who's married to the guy who initiated the first week the yeah. first wish and the second one is just the ideological inconsistency about yes. why making the wishes is bad and then sam literally saying what that like what makes life life is that you don't get what you want and you're miserable forever and that's good yeah <laughs> no i mean i think the main complaint really is for me the oh. whole like hope situation and also the fact that they focus on the the guys guys like oh my god it's so sad that she's not in love with me anymore after the after the spell that made her like you ruined her life (laughs) like (laughs) she like you made a wish hoping it would come true that she would ditch her family ditch her friends ditch her job come live with you do nothing but please you and make you roast chicken and then offer sex to you whenever you felt bad 
And, like, now she's gonna, like, come back to reality with the memories of, like, all of that happening and, like, the horror of that and have to rebuild her life, like, from scratch after being essentially mind-controlled for a month. Yeah, and, like, I think wishful thinking really cements to me who is supposed... Who Supernatural thinks is watching the show, you know? Men. Like, (laughs) yeah, men. Yep. Yeah, and, I mean, it's very obvious, like, from a lot of episodes of Supernatural, but this mm. is the one where it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, there is, like, was, it's not even yeah. that they mm-hmm. think only men are, they think men are the primary watcher. It's that they think men are the only ones watching mm. or like, they are the only ones watching that we are care obligated about. or even like, care to, about catering to. Yeah. So, yeah, that was like, A bit of a, oh, okay, well, that's horrible. Yeah, and I talked about this in uh, in our episode for it, but, like, this is, like, a Ben Edlin problem because I think the moment that I had that feeling was in season two with Simon Said, where, like, there's, like, is her name Tracy? I I forgot, but... Okay, there's, like, this woman that, um... What's that guy? Is his name Andy? Is his name Andy? Yeah, Andy, mind controls. Yeah. Kind of. Right, yeah. no, 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 Ansem, Ansem Weems is the one who mind controls her. The like, twin. Yeah, okay, yeah, Andy's twin is, like, an awful guy who, like, mind controls women to rape them and then, like, makes them, like, jump off a bridge and kill themselves after or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And, like, this woman is also the love interest of Andy, his brother. And then at the end of the episode, like, once she's been rescued, like, she's, like in the ambulance and shivering stuff like she's been through like the worst thing ever and then andy approaches her and she like is scared of him because she knows that he has mind control like powers like powers as well brother yeah and like the episode ends on like his face looking sad that she rejected him in this moment of like absolute horror and trauma for her and that is also a ben edlund episode like yeah. I don't know, this guy just has a thing where he's like, I'm gonna make women, like, the victims in this episode, but, like, in a way where, like, it only matters yeah. because, like, this causes them to reject the men that you're supposed to feel bad for in the episode. Does- oh, yeah, that episode was really bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, so many episodes of Supernatural are, like, like this well i mean yeah but also ben edlin specifically i feel like like you yeah you go into his episodes and like he has good episodes this is true on the head of a pen is his right Uh oh and yeah he did a mystery spot and changing channels too Mm -hmm. yeah did he he also did well the man who would be king his most iconic one oh yeah yeah but but like some a lot of the times you go into his episodes like I hope there's. Yeah, I hope he doesn't write women. This episode. <laughs> he like, also did the Cupid episode too. Oh so my dirty kind of like, Yeah, no, like he. Yeah, he does have a lot of bangers of good just, ones, like also iconic really ones. Bad about women. Yeah, there are also yes. just ones that are like, oh well, that's horrible. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. Ma- I think Monica? wishful thinking is the worst one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a worse one? Of season four, I would have to say. Uh, season four mm-hmm. yes in my opinion i think monster movie mm, i oh, did yeah. like monster movie monster also now movie that i've seen. read dracula yeah. like what the fuck were they on about in that one that is not <laughs> what happens in dracula <laughs> that is also ben edland yeah yeah <laughs> that's why my least this my least favorite mm. you know what i would do a like a honorary mention to what is that family remains oh <laughs> Kind of yeah, bad. It just I mean, it's not as egregious. It's very good. I just don't think it's as bad. It's just also not good at all. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's it's an interesting concept. It's just I feel like the whole family like moral that they had at the end, where it's like it's fine that the dog died and also the uncle died because the nuclear family is so fine it was a bit crazy. Yeah, yeah. So and they just witness their dog's throat slit and their uncle impaled in front of them but it's fine they're hugging each other yeah well okay yeah. best episode favorite mm. well not best favorite episode 
Let's go I, back. I'd say 421, even though it's also so awful. I it, just it's think a lot that, of thought. Like, like you yeah. think about it a lot. I feel. Yeah, I feel like like all the Sam hallucinations, besides like the useless Alistair one, were like well written, well acted, like brought together a lot of things that like I was like, why aren't they talking about this this season? Like, I feel like it. It was a really good like conclusion to the Sam arc that they had for the season. Okay, um, my answer would be. Um, Lazarus Rising, but I feel like we shouldn't add Lazarus Rising in the mix just because, well, I mean, obviously, but for me, I think it's a terrible life is mm. the best episode this uh, season. Oh, it's a terrible life. It's good. It's, it's a good one. I, I love it. I love it. Um, lots to say, but I think it's good. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I think... Um, huh. We have two uh, Sarah the, Gambles as the favorites so far. Well, yeah. I mean, t- I think It's a Terrible Life is like... I do feel sad that it doesn't inform a lot of the future decisions Sam and Dean yeah. make. Like, it feels very isolated, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's a big like it episode. A like, big Zachariah deal. is revealed here. 419 should also be a big deal, but it isn't. But, like, they, they, they don't really reckon with what they learn here. To the point where sometimes I'm like, do they even remember that? Like, did I forget? But yeah, I think it's still wonderful. And I do think, like, viewing the rest of the season with the lens of what happened in It's a Terrible Life is, like, an effective way to view it, you know. Monica, Mm -hmm. have you figured out your favorite episode? Yes, I have. Um, Let's hear it. My favorite episode is on the head of a pin. Good, of course. Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I just like that it goes a little bit deeper. Yeah. into like Cassio's character, mm-hmm. and then like he really has to like think about his loyalty to heaven, mm-hmm. and he has to confront like the brutality that it would take to war win a yeah. war against hell. So mm-hmm. yeah, he's like it. It also like I feel like on the pin on the head of a pin. I don't know if I'm going to regret saying this, but it really is like kind of like the start of the Destiny All storyline. Yeah. Because I the complexity. I agree. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think that, yeah, it, I like, would give anything to have you not do this is like, was crazy. I feel like the first yeah. moment that anyone would be like, <laughs> wait a second, this goes deep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like that's just, that's more than just like a plea. That's like, okay, that's a little desperate there. <laughs> I don't mean, I think on the head of a pin, like, it is the first episode in this season that, like, starts with angels in the, like, teaser portion of the episode. You know, like, mm-hmm. before the splash the screen, it was Cass. Like, Cass was the opening of this episode. And, like, that, you know, it's like, I think that sets the tone of what the episode would be, which is, it's bigger than Sam and Dean. Like, it's not mm-hmm. about them. And, like, I like that. Right, I like right, that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Should we talk about Destiel? I feel like we should. Or shouldn't we? <laughs> we could talk about Destiel. Though, okay, wait. There's something that I forgot to mention while we were talking about the Cass arc that probably doesn't yeah. matter. But I think the the contrast between Cass's absolute coldness towards the Novak family in 420 and then him turning around and deciding to save the world and humanity is something that I wish they'd smoothed over mm. a little bit. Because, yeah. like... And I know he was just recently brainwashed by Heaven, so that's probably part of it. But, like, I feel like 420 could have been a really good opportunity to show, like... Okay, when Cass first possessed Jimmy, like, he, like, traumatized Claire for life by going, I'm not your father, and then fucking off forever. But, like, maybe now that, like, he's had more time on Earth, he's talked to Dean, like, he's learned to, like, care about humanity more. Like, like maybe, like when he repossesses Jimmy and leaves Amelia and Claire. Like, just, like, one word of comfort or, like, one look or something, and it would, like, show that he's changed as a person and, like, how he cares about people, and, like, that would be a better lead-in to him, like, deciding not to end the world yeah. for 22. But, like, we yeah, don't right. get that. And I feel like that could have probably fixed most of my issues with the cast arc in season four. 420, Cass is like, 
I don't know. He's like he the gaff. He absolutely does yeah, not care about yeah, the no yeah. And then you know we go to four twenty one, and he's looking at Dean in that crane scene, like, oh my god, Dean, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. And it's like <laughs> yeah. it is a bit like of a jarring thing if you, especially if yeah, you like, like are watching yeah. for the cast that like, oh yeah, what, what the hell? Yeah, I also just find like he didn't end the world because he wanted to fuck that one guy as like not a particularly interesting idea to me so well, I think it's so that. interesting <laughs> anything I that it's points so to him having larger values around the sanctity of life or whatever the fuck I would yeah, like well, I mean as I said in our uh, 422 episode like I don't want to overstate how much Dean influence cast to stop the apocalypse but I also don't mm-hmm. want to understate it like yeah, it does yeah. matter it's it not the matters. only thing that matters yeah. but it does but it's, matter yeah. um, it's a main thing yeah yeah but yeah i mean i think our next part is well crystal you're supposed to discuss the thing <laughs> wait what thing <laughs> like where's the fucking spreadsheets right oh is is that now Okay, wait, oh, but you said, should we talk about Destiel, and then we didn't talk about Destiel. <laughs> You're right! Well, do we have anything to say about Destiel? I mean, like, for me, They honestly, do want to fuck like, each other. It, it is true. I did see it on my screen, how they wanted to fuck each other. I don't know if they're romantically into each other yet, but they do want yet, to fuck but, each other. No, I think um, it, I am just surprised that... Because, you know, when you're in the fandom a lot, you, you, you interface with Destiel a lot. So there is a tendency to be like... Yeah, maybe you're um, overstating it or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, we are in a community where we are engaging with it in this way. So, of course, we're going to, you know? But mm-hmm. seeing the show and the Destiel scenes with, with the context of the show, it's like, no, it is real. Like, it is happening on my screen. And it is a bit of a shock, even if I knew it was going to be there, that it was mm. really there with the intensity that it was in. So well, that's all I have Monica, to say. Monica, really. do you have do you have season four Destiel thoughts? All I have to say is that they try to tell them that it wasn't happening, and girl, it was. <laughs> the one thing that they don't do is look back at the source, because if it's one thing, the supernatural fans will do. It, they will revisit. Yeah. They will revisit, okay? They will cite their sources. Yeah. All right? You put it in the show. You wrote the show. <laughs> a lot of the people who were writing on season four were still writing yeah, on the show right, yeah. until, like, season 10, season 11. And those same people would go into conventions and laugh or chuckle at the even mention of Destiel. And listen, <laughs> I am a firm believer that, like, maybe you shouldn't bring up ships around actors because they could feel uncomfortable. But... You could tell us what wasn't happening because you wrote the show. Yeah, you wrote the line, <laughs> I mean, sir. Like, we're not dumb. Okay, do we? Sometimes think it was yeah, an go. acting or a writing thing that carried Dusty on season four, though. Like, do you think that there's I mean, like a character that could have the same line? Here's as cast. That? Here's my hot take. I think okay. it's the directing. I think Robert Singer did this. <laughs> Because of the blocking? No, like, yeah, no, honestly, yeah, I, you know what? I'm on your side on that one, yeah. Like, I think it's just like, you know, like, this is where they stand, this is yeah. how they... You didn't live. have to stand that close, Robert Singer yeah. was like, a few inches closer, <laughs> go. No, yeah, like, a lot of the times, like, when we talk about Destiel in season 4 specifically, it's about the blockings. It's about the vibe of the scene, how the scene mm-hmm. looks in comparison to other scenes in the show of the season. Like, something I say a lot about season four, Desiel, is like, a lot of it is so quiet. A lot of it, like, happens at night in the privacy of anything else. And the reason why is because they're trying to make cast mysterious and, like, you know, specifically, like, mysterious and talking to Dean. Mm-hmm. But the way it comes off is like, I don't even know. Like, they're just hanging out. Yeah. At night, in the dark, standing very close to each other. Okay, so I guess let's start with the the tab on the spreadsheet that I call Writer Sins, which is our misogyny, racism, and homophobia stats. So, um, under misogyny, the episode we ranked as the most misogynistic was Lucifer Rising, written by and directed by Eric Kripke, which we gave four misogyny points, 
Really? For... Because it ends the Ruby story? Is that why? Yeah, because the, the way that it ends the Ruby story, and you also had a special aversion to the, oh, with the way that the nuns were killed in that episode. Yeah. Um, following that, there are three episodes that got three misogyny points, and those are Monster Movie, Wishful Hell Thinking, yeah. and The Hell Monster yeah. at the End of This Book. So, Hell yeah. yeah. I can't believe we put wishful thinking a tree. We should have got that yeah. higher, but okay. We should have we should have put it higher. I think I think we got more liberal with our points after we came back from rubbish pod because we weren't as inundated in the supernatural bullshit. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. We yeah. weren't as used to it. Mm-hmm. So under racism, the episode we ranked as the most racist was On the Head of a Pin by Ben Edlund, which is because it concludes the Uriel arc, I believe. Yeah. So that got three points. And then the other second most racist episode <laughs> um, so was funny. Heaven okay. and Hell, which had two points. And I think that's also because of the way they treated Uriel as a character. And Ruby's... Um Right, and also when Ruby possessed a black maid, and the direct the way that was directed choices, was yeah yeah was oh that was weird. yeah they were like yeah. suddenly she is sassy like in yeah. a new way, and it's like interesting yeah. why That's is like, that? Yeah, like Ruby has been into two a uh, tree vessels at that point, right? And it's mm-hmm. like, well, why is this the only one that's different? What's that about? Yeah. Um. And then for homophobia, obviously our winner winner it's chicken dinner life. is It's a Terrible Life by Sarah Gamble. I love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Because the whole thing was like, wouldn't it be gay if you had a job in an office? <laughs> and wouldn't it be funny if it was gay? Yeah. 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 And. After that, we don't have a three-point... That one had four points of homophobia. We don't have a three-point homophobia. The the next one is a two-point homophobia on Chris Angel as a douchebag by Julie Siege because of, I think, the way that the magicians were reacting to the the new one, Jeb, or whatever. But they were also gay. (laughs) But they... Yeah, I mean, we know in our hearts that they were also in a polycule. Um, oh, and also the fucking chief. I forgot about the chief. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> That's probably why. Yeah, you haven't been had till you've had been had, until by, the you've been had by the chief. <laughs> Love yeah. that. Um, and then if we just added up everything, like, the the worst episode in terms of social ills oh, okay. was Lucifer Rising, which we gave mm-hmm. five total points. Um, also, not one of our categories, but of course we gave 421 five points for ableism for <laughs> the way they yeah, treated right. Sam's addiction. So it is Horrible. also <laughs> pretty bad. In there. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of writers themselves, um, this is a this is a fun season because I there's like no one off writers like yeah. at all. In season it's three, we still had guest really. writers. Season four, it's like the team: Eric Kripke, Sarah yeah. Gamble, Jeremy Carver, Catherine Humphreys, Ben Edlund, the Dab Laughlin duo, which will become a Dab solo thing eventually, right? And Julie eventually, Siege. but it's still a long time from now. Yeah. So, for our writers, our most misogynistic writer is <laughs> Eric Kripke, who had an average of two and two thirds misogyny per episode over his three episodes. He is also oh, our wow. most racist writer with <laughs> one and one third average racism points per episode. Look. Our most. I mean, if you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to speak on that yeah. real quick. Yes. Um, I feel like it hasn't changed. Yeah. Because the boys, if you really? look at like the recent. Yes. Like if you look at the recent casting for the oh, boys and like more. the two new like uh-huh. they're they're adding like two women to the cast mm-hmm. and one is a black woman, one's a white woman, and they're supposed to be like the new antagonist. Mm. So now I'm sitting here like, okay, if you don't know anything about the boys, if you haven't been watching it, I'm like, okay, so we really setting y'all up you really setting us up mm. <laughs> to do this and yet Homelander will still live. Mm. Is that it? Like what's it gonna take? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. I haven't seen the boys. Yeah. Who's Homelander? Is the main character. Um, Homelander. Right? 
Or okay. am I completely you lying? Know that- yeah, he is one of the main characters. I the main and if you've seen any of like woman. the So there is an Asian woman in the show. Okay. But she I is one her. of the main characters, but she also doesn't talk. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, fulfilling the, you know, silent Asian trope, which we love. Mm. Um but Homelander is also like the main antagonist for some reason who for some reason doesn't die okay. and who for some reason hasn't been killed yet. And if you've seen the meme of that of that guy, guy like looking around and like, and, like smiling kinda. Is it the one? Yeah, yeah, that's a Homelander. Yeah. yeah. I don't I can't I don't think I've seen this meme or the description. I'll, I'll send too it to you at some point. Don't worry okay. about it. <laughs> and you will recognize it immediately. Mm-hmm. In terms of homophobia, our most homophobic writer is of Sarah, course, Gamble. Sarah Gamble. Because of what happened in It's a Terrible Life. So she has an average of one homophobia point per her four episodes, but that's just because we gave her four <laughs> points in one time. <laughs> um, Love that. For like totals, Air Kripke is the worst in average of four writer sins per episode. Which means that he committed 12 throughout this season, which is quite a few. Um, And then runner-ups for worst writers in terms of social ills are Ben Edlund, uh, average of three and a third points total for his three episodes. And then Julie Siege, who had an average of two and two-thirds points for her three episodes. So yeah, that. that is the state of things. Huh, if we want to do a comparative look between seasons four and three, um, just, there are, there are more points in season four than season three. Like, our worst overall writer in season three, well, this is averages. Okay, okay. Our worst overall writer in season three was Ben Edlund, who had two and two thirds average points per episode. So, comparing yeah. to the, the four points max in season four with Eric Kripke, either either we've gotten looser with our points giving, or they've gotten worse as people. Uh, okay, uh, IMDb. Did I IMDb. win? Did I lose? What's the situation? You lost. Are you serious? <laughs> you lost. That's so sad. I know. Wait, I'm going this to never go to happens. our doc right now. Yeah. This is All so right. horrible. All right. Well, why why did I lose? What's the situation? Okay, so why did you lose? So I guess for the two of us, um, we each only guessed one episode correctly for the IMDb score. I guessed the rapture correctly, and you guessed monster at the end of this book correctly. Um, for yeah. our most off guesses, um, it, for in the beginning, you guessed that it was an 8.4 on IMDb. It is a 9.2. So I think that did a lot of damage to you. Yeah. Um, you also guessed Metamorphosis a lot higher. You guessed Great Pumpkin a lot higher. Um, same with Chris Angel. And then you guessed heaven and hell a lot lower so i feel like those were the main hits that you took um uh i was 0.7 points off on metamorphosis i thought it was ranked higher than it was and i also thought that chris angel was more beloved and that yellow fever was less beloved so those were my major points off but basically your absolute difference on average from the imdb score was 0.332 and mine was 0.314 so i was closer (laughs) than you were by a smidgen though really the real winner of this season was danica who only guessed on one episode lazarus rising and was off by 0.2 so her average (laughs) offness is 0.2 points which is a lot better than both of ours I love it. Um, yeah, but yeah. And what is really like the surprise yeah. episode here? I think when the levy breaks is the one. When the levy breaks is the one where uh-huh. I'm like, that is low. That's true. That was also higher. a surprise episode. Both of us guessed it to be like at least 0.5 higher than I yeah. gave it. Um, in terms mm. of how each of the writers fared on IMDb, uh, Eric Kripke was the most beloved. 
Average IMDb and score, but that's just because he gives himself like the finales and the first episodes and shit. Um, and then after that, Ben Edlund had an eight point seven av, Dab and Laughlin eight point six three, and then Jeremy Carver eight point six, and then Sarah Gamble and Julie Siege had the worst IMDb scores with an eight point five five for Gamble and an eight point five for Siege. That's not true. Oh, no. Sorry. The worst I forgot so bad I forgot about her was Catherine Humphreys at an 8.2. <laughs> no, but, like, I think Metamorphosis was good. It was just yeah, not they just, rated high. Yeah, it just was not rated high. I think Sex and Violence, Sex and was, violence not very good. was interesting. It yeah. was also just not rated It was not high. very good. Okay. So, for our final bit, we need to rank Season 4 in comparison to all the other seasons. Mm-hmm. So currently our ranking is one, two, three. Right. Where is season yeah. four? Where Do we season think season four? I think season four is better than twenty three, for sure. Do we think it's better than season one? It's been so long, like I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I think season one is better than season four. Okay. Yeah. I am inclined to rate season four higher just because I don't remember season one so good and also it had like bugs and the racist truck and all that shit in it like i feel like there were probably some real clunkers in season one there are also some real clunkers in season four though so i don't know i think we shouldn't think of it as individuals we should think of it as a whole is season four as a whole better than season one as a whole and i think season one's better when I think of season one as a whole, like, I'm thinking about, like, Bad Moon Rising, the fic. Like, I don't know what season one is outside of the concepts of Bad Moon Rising, the fic, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm just well, gonna, I'm gonna put season four higher for now. I don't know. I don't know. I mean... No, I miss Meg. I miss Meg. No, season one's better. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I want to hear what Monica is going to say about this. Do you think okay. season one or four is better? Season four is definitely better. Okay. <gasps> it's definitely better. Okay. It's found its footing. It's better writing. The characters are finally like being introduced to higher stakes. Yeah. There's more. At, there's more to lose. There's a lot more that we have to like deal with, and there are new characters being introduced that we don't know who's gonna last. We don't know who's gonna, you know, be in season five. Who's gonna be like written off essentially? So season four is definitely better because season one is literally like the starting off point where they're doing just like you know whatever. Monster of the yeah, week they're just doing whatever. To find their dad. Oh. Yeah, season four is really when Supernatural hits the ground running. Like season think, four is definitely better. I think that's true if we're talking about the plot. Like, the plot does get better in season four. This is true. Because in season one, they really were just fucking around. Yeah. But they were fucking around and occasionally thinking about their dad. Season one, vibes wise, I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, on one hand, like, season four is like where Cass shows up. So that is important to me in that way. But season one, I feel like it's like season one, Sam and Dean, I like them the most. So what do you think? <laughs> I know, mean, I'm being swayed honestly, by Monica a little bit. Like, well, yeah, like the Monster of the Week format in season one is kind of tiring. Like, no, the thing is, when we were watching season one, we hated it. Yeah, but it's like a good season to look back on if you're not rewatching it. <laughs> right. So it's only okay. good in the mind and not on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think maybe we should put season four up because I did just say that season one is bad on screen. <laughs> I mean, I, think- I also think season four is bad on screen. <laughs> like, this isn't like a both are so good, I'm trying to figure it out. This is like a which one could I tolerate more <laughs> thing to me. Honestly, I think um, it's just because season four is sad. Season 4 is a sad season, especially if you're watching it from the Sam perspective. I think it's like, very we were crying like every other week in season 1 and like we but were But that's because we were really four. into it. That's uh-huh. true. So like, okay, there has to well, be a reason we were crying so much. 
Like, it's because it was effective. It? It's because, yeah. as I said, like, the characters are good. Four isn't effective. No, season four is effective in what it's trying to do, and it's trying to do plot. Season okay. one is effective, and it's what trying to do, and it's trying to do character. Mm-hmm. I think so. Okay. Well. Well. What if we just put them side by side? What do you think? What do you think? Seems like the coward's <laughs> way out to me. This is true. This is we're just like John Winchester for real. Um, well, I'll <sighs> put season one above. Yeah, that's my final answer. For the sake of equality, I'll put season four above. No, wait, we're going to have different rankings. Oh, Isn't wait, we, wait, was there a requirement for us to come to a bad pod consensus on this? Yes, but I mean, it's because okay. we had a consensus in one, two, and three. So we can have like a, we, we're splitting off in season four. Just like Sam Just and like Dean. Just like Sam and five. Dean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I still don't even okay. know if I believe it, though. Because season one is so... I think of season one very fondly in my mind. But I think that's I just because I haven't watched it for, like, a year. <laughs> More than a year. Mm-hmm. I think... Yeah. <laughs> See, Mac is agreeing. Well, let's just separate. Let's let's tread okay. different paths. Okay. 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 Monica, you said that season three is sort of, like, your fave. Though, right? Like... I like season three just because it's fun, mm-hmm. but like season four arguably is the best. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so, okay, our ranking, great, great. Well, my ranking right now is season four, then one, then two, then three. Grey's is one, four, two, three. What are what are your rankings for the first four seasons of Supernatural? Um, I would probably say if I had to rank them, it would be. Four, three, one, and two. Mm. Four, three, one, and two. That's yeah. that's fascinating. You really like season three. Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah. I feel like season three has the most like fun meta episodes. Mm. Yeah, and it doesn't really take itself too seriously. But also, like, it was in the middle of the 07 writer yeah. strike. Yeah, and only has sixteen that episodes. Is, yeah, so they were just kind of like doing whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do. I do think that like, um. Ghost Chasers, or no, it was Ghost Facers? Yeah. I think that Ghost Facers. Ghost Facers, yeah. And like Mystery Spot are definitely a good, fun time. I think that yeah. season three, like the last few episodes of season three were quite underwhelming, and that's probably what caused us to dislike it so much by the end. But I mean, like, Bella was there, like, that was fun. Yeah. Wait, why don't you like season two? I mean, it's nothing against season two or anything like that, you know? Like, let me ask you. What did you think of season two? And I'll give you my answer. Mm, Horrible. We hated it. it. Yeah, I felt pretty annoyed during a lot of it. Um, I feel like they just did a bad job with the overarching plot, I think. Like, the way it was, they um, It was really good when it started. The kids thing. Yeah, yeah, like, 201 was a banger. Um, We hated 202 because of... Actually, it was also well. really good when it ended, I feel like. Hmm. Was it? So why did we not like it? <laughs> was it good when it ended? Like, yeah, how, how was Abel, though? Like, did we like it that much? I mean, they treat Jake horribly. That's, like, the main thing I remember about it. I mean, I don't know. But again, Supernatural is very much a show where it's good in retrospect. So, like, now that we're thinking about it, it's like, OMG, it was real good. Like, what did we I not mean, like about it? Is it... Was it real good? Like, I remember Simon said, which I did not like, um, 201 yeah. was really good. Oval, like, the main things I remember about that are, like, being mean to Jake... And then um, John Winchester rising from hell, <laughs> like clapping and Dean on the shoulder with, and then disappearing yeah. into heaven. Like, yeah, I think I think I think I liked Joe and no exit, like her presence and like Ellen's presence and Ash's presence mm-hmm. all was something good in season two. But I do recall being frustrated that they didn't develop the overarching plot very well. Yeah. Season two, like everything just entered like at the end. Um, they 
there was no like build up in the middle of the season but mm-hmm. i would say that it's kind of like again the vibe situation like i like the vibe of like sam and dean are here and their dad just died and they're trying to find their way around the world with that and i think sam's character arc that season was interesting of like i hate dad and then like he dies and it's like well he was right probably and dean's you know experiencing the opposite of that arc and it's that was really i was really into that yeah i feel that um i think the reason why i am not a huge fan of season two because if i have to put up i guess the fourth seasons i'm just gonna say season two is maybe not like i don't want to say it's bad but, but it's weak it, yeah you know they're it's a little weaker mm-hmm. you yeah. know they introduce the chase for azizel and that's interesting. And then they bring in Bobby, who I love. And then there's like the complex prophecy behind Sam's destiny, linking him to like other children with special abilities. Yeah. Like you mentioned, there's an episode where like the brother, that's the season two, right? Yeah. Where the brother has the mind control. Yeah. yeah. That's also the same season. So season two is kind of like trying to continue on with season one, but they can't really do the, they can't do monster of the week because you're still introducing new things and you're trying to follow like a storyline yeah. and they're supposed to be like um something we're chasing mm-hmm. at the end of the season and like all this other stuff so i think that season two is really what supernatural is trying to build something more yeah out of what the show really is and they're just first finding their footing so it's just kind of like the first start yeah the first draft it feels a little bit like a bridge season i understand almost yeah yeah. i think that's Mm -hmm. how i feel about season three more and that's why i didn't like it as much but yeah i mean i don't think you can blame that necessarily on season three due to the circumstances in which it was created you know yeah no we are season three yeah i feel like i didn't like it very much because it's just like the season where they try to prevent Dean from going to hell, but I know he's going to hell anyway. Yeah. I feel like it would be much more effective if you didn't know that, you know? Like, if you were mm-hmm. like, oh my god, he really does go to hell at the end? What the hell? So, yeah. Right. Um, so that's it for this episode of Bus Asian Beauties. Next week, we will be uh, I don't know, like... Well, we will one. be doing season 5 episode 1. What's that called? Whatever it's called. Um... Uh, <laughs> Um, Wait, what is it called? It's sympathy SPM. for the devil. Yeah, well, we're doing that. But before you know, we leave. Monica, do you want to tell the audience where to find you? How to contact you? <laughs> contact yeah. you? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys can find me. Um, you can look up my podcast. I've been meaning to watch that, and you can listen to it wherever you listen to your podcast. Um, you can find my podcast, you know, like where we listen to podcasts. You can follow us on TikTok. Definitely check out our YouTube because we upload uh, highlights like um, at least twice or three times a week. Nice. And we have the full video version of the podcast up every Monday afternoon. And you can find me on TikTok at my first name, 3000. And follow me on there because I like to talk about movies and TV shows and do analysis on TikTok. And that's about it. Thank you so much for having me on, guys. Yeah. Really yeah. Thank you it so much for so coming good to here. Have you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Follow us on social media. We are on Tumblr at bestiationbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, baby pod. Thanks to everyone who's donated to our ko fi at ko fi.com slash bestiationbeautiespod. And check out our merch at babpod.redbubble.com. Uh, yeah, you can email us at pasifibudishpod at gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.